Good morning to all of you. Your Excellency, the Acting President of the Republic of Mauritius, Mr. Paramasivan Pile Bahapuri, GOSK. The Chairperson of the Open University of Mauritius, Mr. Juva Pentia, CSK. The Director General of the Open University of Mauritius, Dr. Kaviraj Sukon. The Dean of the School of Management, IT and Governance from UKZN, Professor Stephen Mutula. The Organizing Chair from UKZN, Dr. Upasna Singh. Directors, CEOs and representatives of various institutions. Board members of the Open University of Mauritius. Organizing committee members and staff of UKZN. Colleagues of the Open University. Delegates, members of the press, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. A very, very warm welcome to this conference. And to our foreign speakers and delegates, I bid you a very warm welcome to the Paradise Island of Mauritius. We are indeed honored to have you here with us. This IMIG Conference 2019 is being hosted for the second time in Mauritius and has as main theme emerging trends in management, IT, governance, and law in an e-world. Many of us would recall the first edition which was organized in November 2017 in the same venue. Following the exceptional success of that inaugural conference, our two universities decided to come together once again and put up this conference. As the saying goes, whatever is worth doing is worth doing again. We are looking forward to two very informative, productive, and, and enjoyable days. The joint collaboration between UKZN and Open University was triggered in 2016, and since then, we have journeyed many avenues, organizing lectures, seminars, and conferences. We are indeed different in many ways, including our history and size, but this has not prevented us from bringing our resources together to organize this conference a second time, which we anticipate will spearhead South-South University cooperation and set the pace for a sustained research agenda that will profit the African continent and beyond. This conference, however, will not just be another talk shop. We have put together an engaging program that will enthuse delegates from different universities and other institutions to share, discuss, and network at various levels. There is no doubt that connections will be established joint projects developed, and networking of researchers fostered. We envisage that there will be academic discourse at high levels, beyond the traditional keynote addresses and paper presentations. We have included four plenary sessions, which will be dealing with topical issues like the fate of educational technology, the fourth industrial revolution, the Internet of Things, smart cities, good global governance and sustainable development in the 21st century, blockchain, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the next digital storm. We have also included in the program a site visit to showcase best practices in one of our successful institutions in Mauritius. We are thankful to the Mauritius Commercial Bank for opening its doors for this event. My sincere wish is that through this conference, we will all use additional stepping stones to escalate to higher heights in our research endeavors. We are proud in Mauritius to offer the warm weather and the whites and our seesaws as the conference's conducive environment. To put this conference together, we've had the collaboration of a team from UKZN and now I have the pleasure to invite the organizing chair from that side, Dr. Upasna Singh, to give her address.
Good morning to the Honorable President of Mauritius, Mr. Vyapuri, uh, the Chairperson of the Open University, Mr. Pentia, the Director General, uh, Dr. Sukun, the Dean of MIG, Professor Motula, Mr. Apavu, special invited guests, the directors and CEOs, HODs, members of the press, all protocols observed. Saobona and Namaste. I bring to you warm greetings from sunny South Africa, in particular greetings from the University of KwaZulu-Natal, the university of choice which strives to be the premier university of African scholarship. On behalf of the UKZN Organizing Committee, I welcome you all to this, the second EMIG conference. The unforgettable hospitality extended to us in 2017 by our Mauritian colleagues encouraged us jointly to host this event in Mauritius again in 2019. The multidisciplinary nature of this conference makes it a unique conference, encouraging collaboration, networking, and scholarship across the disciplines of law, management, governance, and information technology. This is evidenced in the interesting range of topics in the more than 75 presentations on the program. The association with the peer-reviewed International Journal, which publishes interdisciplinary contributions entitled Alternation, has attracted 126 abstract, abstract submissions to the EMIG 2019 conference. Of these 126 submissions, we are pleased to report that 16 full paper submissions have been earmarked by our reviewers for potential publication in this journal, with another 36 full paper submissions accepted for potential publication in the conference proceedings. We are grateful to the academics from our associate institutions for their support in this review process. Furthermore, EMIC has offered an opportunity to many young scholars, masters, and PhD students, as well as young emerging academics like myself to participate in research scholarship in a re relaxed environment. In addition to the highly recognized keynote speakers and topical plenary sessions, we are encouraged to see participation not only from the host countries of Mauritius and South Africa, but also from our African brothers and sisters, including representations from Angola, Namibia, Nigeria, Zambia, and Zimbabwe, making this a truly African event. In particular, as an advocate of women empowerment, particularly in STEM, I am excited to have many female presenters at this conference this year. We thank you for attending this conference and we look forward to your interaction with our delegates and attendees. We hope your attendance here and the benefits you derive therefrom encourage you to participate in EMIG 2021. If there is anything we can assist with during the conference, please do not hesitate to contact any of the committee members. If there are any shortcomings, we hope that you will pardon us. Thank you, Dr. Singh. We are looking forward that the next edition of this conference will be hosted in the beautiful country of South Africa. Thank you. The conference chair for, from the UK's and inside is the Dean of the School of Management, IT and, Govern and Governance, Professor Stephen Muchola. I shall now invite him to deliver his speech. Oh. Your Excellency, the Acting President of the Republic of Mauritius, Mr. Brahma Sivan Pillay Viapuri, the Chairperson of the Open University of Mauritius, Mr. Duva Pentier, the Director General of the Open University of Mauritius, Dr. Gaviraj Sukon, the Local Organizing Committee Chair from both UKZN and uh, uh, Mauritius, Mr. Abo and uh, Dr. Singh, partners in this conference, sponsors, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Your Excellency, allow me as joint partners in the EMIC 2019 conference 
to convey greetings and best wishes from the Interim Vice-Chancellor of the University of KwaZulu-Natal, Professor Nana Poku. Our colleagues who are here in the past conference will acknowledge that our Vice-Chancellor was also represented here, but this time round, uh, our Vice-Chancellor would have wished to come, but he was held back by the pressures of the office. I'm honored on behalf of my colleagues and students from the University of KwaZulu-Natal, and indeed the entire South African entourage to this conference, to extend our very warm welcome to the delegates attending this conference. The University of KwaZulu-Natal prides itself as being the premier university of African scholarship. In this regard, we are committed to generating knowledge that seeks African solution to African problems. Knowledge that makes life both qualitatively and quantitatively better for our people. Knowledge that reflects African world views and a knowledge base that is inherently and intrinsically African. A knowledge that is based on African realities. However, we also recognize that while we strive to promote African scholarship, we are cognizant of the pressures of globalization and the need to ensure our pursuit of knowledge has global traction and validity. In this regard, we value and engage in collaborative international endeavors, such as the EMIC International Conference, to pursue the African scholarly agenda in a global context. Our commitment to contextual and global excellence in knowledge production have seen the University of KwaZulu-Natal emerge among the top universities, not only on the African continent, but also among the top 3% in the world. We therefore bring to this conference a top academic brand with a message of hope for all our partners in academia, government, business, and civic organization. Your Excellency, we are excited to be in Mauritius, a country which is the role model and beacon of hope for its accountable and transparent governance systems on the African continent. We applaud your government for being party to all international human rights protection instruments, including rights of women, rights of people living with disabilities, and the children's rights, among others. We applaud your government and people of Mauritius that this country has remained the most consistent with a stable GDP for the past decade in the whole of Africa. Your country is also top in e-government development index, human development index, global economic competitiveness, human development, and many other areas, including global gender gap index, especially with respect to involving women in governance of your country. We believe you will help disseminate your model of governance and the development to the rest of the African continent. Um, certain scholars from across the rest of the African continent and visitors from outside the continent covered here will be keen to engage and learn from Mauritius how they have managed to make these achievements in a continent perceived often negatively as the citadel of poor governance, violation of human rights, and corruption, among others. We applaud your presence, Your Excellency, to grace the IMIC conference. It does demonstrate to us your government's commitment to higher education in this country. Indeed, we understand that recently you have undertaken the initiative to provide free education to all undergraduate students in public universities. This is yet another milestone for your government. We applaud your presence as well because of the support you continue to give to the universities. And we believe that through your government, we can reach to other African government to help us address most of the problems that are affecting Africa. We know that Mauritius, just like other African countries, have not invested much in research and development compared to other countries, especially in Europe and North America, whose 
expenditure on research and development uh, averages about 2%. In Africa, the highest country is about 0.7%. And I think Mauritius is sitting at 0.32%. But we believe there is room that we can be able to increase this particular expenditure so that we can be able to increase innovation in our universities. Your Excellency, we are glad to learn that um, the government of Mauritius recently won the battle at the UN court to reclaim back the Chekos Island. We applaud you. Finally, to the delegates, the cross-disciplinary nature of the papers that will be shared in this conference provide us with the perfect opportunity to engage with the African problems and offer African contextual solutions. As we engage in the conference, however, let us not forget to find time to experience the friendly and generosity of Mauritius people, as well as the beautiful sand beaches and palm serene environment of the country. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for these kind words, and we are once again, pleased to hear that Mauritius is being viewed as a model for the African continent. Thank you for taking precious time out to be with us during this conference, and most importantly, for believing in this venture. Putting such a conference together would not have been possible without a visionary in the person of the Director General of the Open University, Dr. Kavira Tsukun whom I have the pleasure to invite to deliver his address. His Excellency, the Acting President of Mauritius, the Chairperson of Open University of Mauritius, the Dean and Head School Management, IT and Governance, University of KwaZulu-Natal, and the partner to organize this conference, the organizing chairs, the CEOs of Tertiary Education Commission, MIE, FDI, HRDC, NPCC, UTM, Oracle, all protocol observed. Dear delegates, good morning and welcome to the second edition of the AMIC conference. Special thanks to the acting president for being present today uh, to open this conference and to Professor Mutula to be here with us. I must say a big thank you for all those delegates who are back for the second time. The EMIC 2017 has been a successful conference. This has been the motivating factor behind organizing this second edition. Now, one of the aims of this conference is to make research more impactful. If I say that to my academics, how will you make that more impactful? The first answer I will get, well, let's publish in, impact fact, uh, in high impact factor journals, and therefore we don't teach, give us time to do research. Well, of course, this is one of, one of the ways to ensure that the research we are conducting is more impactful. But if you look at Mauritius, if you look at the ranking of Mauritius in Africa, for example, ease of doing business, or any other ranking, we are the first or among the top in Africa. Therefore, we are a reference to many people in this region. And what a reference that can even baffle Nobel Prize laureates. In 1961, we had one Nobel Prize laureate, James Mead, who declared Mauritius 
as a basket case, gone. And I'm sure that somewhere, it's my personal reflection, this has contributed to the independence of Mauritius because they all believe that it's gone. It's, we can't do anything with Mauritius. Exactly 50 years after, in 2011, you have another Nobel Prize laureate, Joseph Stiglitz, who says the miracle of Mauritius. So there is something good happening in this country that we need to research. People outside are looking for that research. And I think this is one of the most important aims of this conference, to bring together academics, non-academics, in order to conduct research together that can have an impact. And here, I, I see the increase in number of participants in the second edition from both academics and non-academics. Believe me, our island can be small. Very often, my friends tell me, do people live in that dot? When you see the map, Mauritius is just a dot. Do people live? How can you live in that dot? Of course, it's a dot, small island, small problems. But small problems, they reflect the big problems, the big challenges. And it means, therefore, the solutions that we are going to develop, the solutions that we are going to find, will be the solution that can be used to solve bigger problems. That's why I think we need to make, in order to make the research more impactful, we need to do more research on Mauritius. Um, I don't want to be parochial here by saying that you should only do research in Mauritius. We are, we are uh, an international university, and the link with UKZN shows that uh, we are actually promoting this international collaboration. But what I'm saying is that there must be more focus on the research uh, on Mauritius being given that we are a reference point. Therefore, I sincerely wish that people present today will make the most of this conference to ensure that there is networking, there is, we have plans for future research together, for more impactful research, to ensure that the next edition, in the next edition, we have more and more such publications. Second, to make the research more impactful, I think we need to have a network of the universities in this region. As a small country, we may not always be able to afford everything. But I think if we're able to network and allow our researchers to move around and use the facilities that we have, this will help us to develop more impactful research. And here I make a plea to all the universities present, if we can work together, right, network, and ensure that we open our doors to other researchers so that they can conduct their research. Believe me, as I said, uh, we have small problems, aging population, poverty. We have got our own solutions, negative income tax. So these need to be researched. People need to be informed. Here I would like to point out the important role that tech is playing in terms of the several schemes that they have put to ensure that we have people from abroad coming, we must continue to attract foreign talent. There is no way out. We must continue to attract people from abroad to help us in conducting the research. And the several schemes that they have put to ensure that there is that collaboration, there is finance, there is that 
environment, that ecosystem that will allow researchers to come together and work. And this conference is a concrete evidence of the platform of the opportunity that people have to work together. I'm sure that this conference will be beneficial to everyone, academics, non-academics, together. It has taken a lot of time to prepare this conference, and I must thank the organizing chairs, Dr. Singh from UK Zadan, and Mr. Pavu from Open University, and the entire team behind them, working relentlessly to ensure that this conference happened and is successful. I thank you, all the delegates present, for the trust in IMIG, and wish you a successful and fruitful conference. My deepest gratitude also to all our sponsors, the press and the media partner. Thank you. Wish you a pleasant stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, DG. Allow me to compliment your reflection on research with this quote. The human mind is inquisitive in nature. Translating this inquisitiveness within an epistemological paradigm is what generates empirical research work. Thank you for your unflinching support and sustained guidance throughout the planning stages of this conference. At the Open University, we are privileged to have a very lively and dynamic chairman. Uh, today we hear of what we call productive aging, but I wonder uh, that this, probably this chairman should all be working, still be working in one of those ministries, still running around. We are pleased to have you with us this morning, Mr. Duva Pentia, please. Thank you, MC, for your good words. Well, good morning, everybody. Your Excellency, Acting President of the Republic of Mauritius, Mr. Bayapuri. Dr. Sukon, Director General of Open University of Mauritius. Professor Sid Nair, Executive Director of Tech. Professor Stefan Mutula from UKZN. Dr. Varma, Director, MIE. The organizing chairs, Mr. Apavu and Dr. Upasana Singh. Board members and staff of the Open University. Chairperson, directors, CEOs, and representatives from the private sector. Members of the press, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start by conveying a warm welcome to all of you in our midst today for this second IMIG conference in Mauritius. I would like to extend my warmest thanks to our partner, UKZN, for agreeing to organize this event jointly with the Open University of Mauritius again this year after the successful first edition in 2017. Well, referring to the importance of our meeting today, I must say that such conferences are vital for academics since they cannot isolate themselves from developments and innovation taking place globally. Academics that form the solid foundation of our universities must not only be aware, but they must also integrate fully with what is happening in other fields and the industry. This IMIG multidisciplinary conference is therefore an ideal platform for academics to achieve this objective. Both academics and the industry must be aware of each other's apprehensions and challenges in order to bring a meaningful contribution to the socio-economic landscape and the sustainable development of our respective countries. We need academics who, through the pursuit of excellence and quality, 
and the choices they make about their research interests and teaching, as well as the relationships that they build with the outside world, would be fully in tune with the industry and their fields of teaching. This today conference is a golden opportunity to blur the line between academics and practitioners. I sincerely feel that academics must endeavor to have a little bit of a practitioner in them so as to make them more industry relevant. I'm happy to see a large number of academics attending this conference. And I'm confident that the outcome of the conference will help to refresh the curriculum materials, processes, syllabi, pedagogical practices, and teaching content, and other related processes. The presence of an equally large number of non-academics here makes this gathering even more conducive to make of this conference a fertile ground for sowing the seeds of a solid partnership between the academic and the non-academic world. We always talk about mismatch, you know, in demand and supply of labor. This has been a preoccupation of, uh, you know, for quite uh, some time for us. The theme of this conference also addresses and devour to bridging the gap between demand and supply of the necessary skills. Reducing the mismatch between demand and supply must be a never-ending and devour for academic institutions. This necessarily requires a better understanding between those who teach the students as well as those who will employ them eventually. Participants must therefore identify the set of skills that our graduates need in order to ensure that they are fully empowered and employable. While universities cannot always guarantee that students are ready for jobs as soon as they complete their studies, they have to ensure that learners have the necessary knowledge, work, and transferable skills. We need to boost the confidence of students about the application of what they learn. Employers and students must see that learning is connected to the workplace. It is not only the hard skills, but also the soft skills and the employability skills that count. Multidisciplinary conferences are the right opportunities to emphasize the importance of overall development of the student who must, by all means, fit the workplace. Today's gathering is also an opportunity to expose to exp employers and industry partners about the teaching and research that academics are undertaking. The large number of research papers that will be presented during these two days reflect the hard work and dedication of our academics. I sincerely hope that the findings will not be confined to research journals only. Those must be worked through so that non-academics can understand and use them. Ladies and gentlemen, just like the first edition of IMIC two years back, I'm confident that this one also will be successful and beneficial to the systems, processes, organizations, and to society as a whole. I am aware that it takes many years for us to establish solid pathways between the university and industry. That's why I feel that we must encourage such initiatives that constitute efficient moves in the right direction. There is no doubt that today and tomorrow, this eminent gathering will consider all the details that will make a better world. On a concluding note, I congratulate management and the teams of the Open University of Mauritius and UKZN for putting up together this conference and the good work done so far. I wish you all the best, and I hope that many of the benefits derived from this conference will be realized soon. Thank you very much, and have a successful IMIG2. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Chair, for drawing our attention to the fact that research should not be confined to 
academics only, but should be also the domain of non-academics. And that's why at the Open University, we encourage not only academics, but we encourage each and everyone to be part of that big team doing research. We have the great pleasure to have in our midst his Excellency, the Acting President of the Republic of Mauritius, Mr. Paramasivan Pile Vahapuri. Many of us, while we were working in the NCA, have known him personally, and we are so proud today and happy that he is the Acting President of the Republic of Mauritius today and has accepted to be the Chief Guest for gracing this function. Can I invite now the Acting President for his address and to declare this conference open. Thank you. Mr. Juva Pentaya, Chairman Open University, Dr. Suko, Director General of the Open University, Professor Stefan Mutula, Head School of Management, IT and Governance of the University of KwaZulu Natal, the organizing chairs, Mr. Perianan Apavu and Dr. Upasana Singh, Professor Sid Nair, Executive Director, Tertiary Education Commission, distinguished delegates and guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am indeed delighted to be with you this morning for the opening of this most important international conference on management, IT, and governance. Let me extend to all delegates from abroad my personal welcome. This is the second edition of the EMIG conference being organized in Mauritius. I gather that the first conference held in 2017 was a great success and has successfully opened avenues for academics to share their knowledge and experience. It is indeed a privilege for the Open University of Mauritius to partner with the University of KwaZulu-Natal with the aim of providing an international platform for academics and researchers to share expertise and experience in different fields that are e-driven. I need to congratulate the Open University of Mauritius for the work it has undertaken since its creation in 2013 that has placed it as the second largest university in Mauritius with now 6,000, nearly 6,000 students in just six years. By rallying itself with such prestigious institutions as the KwaZulu-Natal University, it has set itself high goals so as to deliver quality distance education while conducting research. This conference, it is hoped, will set the pace for a sustained research agenda that will benefit countries of the African region. And we in the African region have no choice but to train our African scholars at home. In my previous speeches addressed to the academic community, I have repeatedly emphasized the significance and importance of research in universities. Today, I cannot but repeat myself. For we are living in a most challenging digital world. The mission and responsibility of universities today is to promote learning through that revolutionary digital medium covering a wide range of study fields such as management, good governance, and sustainable development. Indeed, research should be the heartbeat of any university, ambitioning to provide quality content delivery and teaching methods. As academics and researchers present their research findings, my sincere wish, as has been mentioned earlier, is that the ultimate beneficiary will be the society at large. 
with the tremendous and rapid and sometimes surprising changes going on in the world, we have to explore ways and means to provide extensive high-quality university education for our citizens in our respective countries and for the world as a whole. As future demands for competence and skills change radically, the versatile and high standards research and teaching conducted at universities must continue to grow in importance while being continually innovative. Universities are expected to be active, creative, open-minded and unbiased and take the role of pioneers. We should pause, though, to carefully consider what kind of a system of higher education can secure success in our respective countries. There are several goals, several wishes, several criteria that come in the forefront. But it's only when the main objective of higher education and research, which is increasing increasing the increasingly aiming at higher quality when that idea remains evident in our mind that the appropriate goals can be designed and also the means therefore found. Hopefully these means can be identified and employed politically, economically and socially by the principles of sustainable development. In what kind of a world are we educating our youth? A world marked by uncertainty, for sure. What is certain is that in the next decades, we will see radical and quite rapid changes. Many jobs will disappear and employment-based mobility will increase. Within a certain time, overall competence and skills will be more important than the completed degree itself. It is certain that future needs and demands for expertise will be very different from the present ones. Globalization and internationalization wide knowledge and big data, augmented and artificial intelligence, robotics and digitalization, climate change and sustainable development, the sufficiency of food, water, natural resources in general will bring about significant changes and pose great challenges faster than we believe. How can human well-being and the resilience of nations be secured? We need new thinking and creativity, as well as new operational approaches and steadfast political decisions, both at home and abroad. High-quality research and research-based teaching offer solutions and provide our learners with solid skills for the future. What is crucial is to build up those expertise and competence which will allow learners to continue learning and be able to create new solutions. Solutions that we have no idea about today. Thus, lifelong learning remains increasingly important. Quality is of equal importance and concern. The quality of education the content of study programs, as well as teaching and learning methods, call for attention. This applies to all forms of disciplines. Real cooperation must be undertaken throughout the whole spectrum from, the, from early education to doctoral education. Particularly, universities and general upper secondary schools need to engage in closer collaboration. The ongoing changes in the world and the various competence needs of the future 
call for this collaboration between different levels in the education sector. The high quality and wide recognition of research are the most important factors in attracting the most talented researchers and learners of Mauritius. To achieve the shared national objectives of improving the quality and impact of research and education, we need firstly sufficient resources for the whole sector, particularly for top-level research. And secondly, a clear national policy for higher education and science that is in line with our innovative policy. Indeed, we know that the Tertiary Education Commission will develop guidelines and implement them in the coming years. Is that true, Mr. Sid Nair? Regardless of the funding situation, but primarily because of the limitation it poses, we need more explicit, useful specialization and profile building throughout higher education. This in turn requires collaboration, but above all, a clear division of responsibilities. Not everyone will continue doing what they are currently doing or what they have been doing before. Clearer profiles would enable the African higher education sector to manage better, even with limited resources. By clearly dividing their responsibilities, universities and other institutions of higher education could produce a sufficient amount of sufficiently high quality research and teaching methods based on each institution's unique characteristics and research related regional strengths. The point is we need more specialization and more explicit profiles within and between institutions of higher education. Instead of engaging in mutual competition, the focus should be on productive collaboration. The same is true at the national level. Mutual competition for limited national resources does not bring in more funds. Instead, we must cooperate and acquire more international funding, particularly from foreign foundations. We should also team up with high quality international partners. It goes without saying that to succeed in the acquisition of research funding and the engagement of strategic partners, we must produce high quality and high impact research. I am given to understand that the Tertiary Education Commission has also revamped the recruitment of high profile academics from well known universities abroad and share, to share their research experiences with us. The hiring of professors in particular is one of the most important and long lasting decisions a university can take, can make. We have indeed put the focus on students' needs, not just in our speeches, but also in our action. Recent budgets have indeed allocated significant funding to promote research, especially in the education sector. To promote the impact of our research and education, the local government has focused on the provision of related training to researchers in a variety of study fields. It would be interesting if the Open University could open its new Think Corner, which is a relaxed forum where the academic and broader communities can meet, exchange ideas, and establish networking. Before I conclude, as Mr. Mutula has mentioned the Chagos Archipelago issue, let me take this opportunity to express our thanks again to all our African brother countries for their support, for our claim of our sovereignty on the Chagos Island and the success that we got at the International Court of Justice, thanks to the support of all the African Union countries. Thank you for that. And now, the resolution will be tabled at the United Nations on the 22nd 
coming 22nd this month, and our Prime Minister will be attending, and the motion will be presented by the representative of Senegal. So we are hoping for another success. Let me conclude by again congratulating both the Open University of Mauritius and the University of KwaZulu-Natal to have joined hands in organizing this EMIG International Conference here in Mauritius. I wish you all fruitful exchange of ideas today and tomorrow. I gather there will be as many as 65 presentations. I wish all foreign delegates a pleasant stay in Mauritius. Enjoy to the most our sunshine, our cool climate, and our warm hospitality. I look forward to the next conference, which, as per the wish of the U University of KwaZulu-Natal organizing chair, could be held in their beautiful paradise that is South Africa. I now have the pleasant duty, ladies and gentlemen, to declare this international conference on management, IT, and governance open. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, remarkable speech with words of knowledge, wisdom, and also for the discernment that you've shown in your argumentations. It is also very reassuring to have the support of the acting president of the Republic of Mauritius in furthering the mission and vision of our university. Thank you so much. We would like now to offer, I'm going to ask the chairman of the Open University, Mr. Pentia, to offer a seal to His Excellency.